G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin and I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. And since moving to Australia, I've learned quite a bit about Australian history, particularly through the Anzacs, through Gallipoli, World War I. And I saw this video pop up on my homepage, The History of the Slouch Hat from Riz Australian History. So I have no idea what the history is behind the hat. I know it's a very unique Aussie hat. But overall, I have no idea what the history behind this is. Maybe some of you guys know. Let's check it out. So grab a Becky, grab a cuppa, and let's jump right into this video. This is the Australian slouch hat, or the Australian bush hat, or the Australian military hat, or the khaki hat, or the diggers hat, or the... Created by Anthony Rizzo, Sydney, Australia. There's a lot of names for the hat, and yet many don't know its history. Also, the history of it is a bit complicated, and yet it's an iconic symbol to Australian culture. So here's the condensed history of the Australian starch hat, with a few notable bits, and a lot of mispronunciation. So let's begin with the context. First off, slouch hats are just hats slouched to one side. Slouch hats have been a thing since about the 17th century, but those were cavalier hats. The hats from the Austrian military in the early 19th century, called the Corsican hats, is said to be the inspiration of the slouch hat, but I don't see that's the case for the Australian hat at least. Player resemblance show up in the late 19th century, and by then several militaries used a similar hat, but with different shapes and a different name. One example is the United States Koshu hat used during the Civil War and the Spanish-American War. They were more notable by the Rough Riders, but the country that inspired Australia to adopt the Slouch hat was the British and India. I told you it was confusing. The British started using a new hat called the khaki hat, which is an umbrella term for a light brown hat. Khaki is a loan word from the Hindu or Persian language, meaning soiled color. The word was used by the British India Army in the mid 19th century when the army introduced the khaki uniform and the color looked like, well, the soil on the ground. And so it makes sense given the color, given the time period and whatnot that it is the color and the shading that it is. Especially because at the time, like pre-1901, Australia was still part of the British Empire before it became its own independent commonwealth. So it does make sense that there was still a lot of British influence at that time. Even like post-1901, there was still a lot of British influence in Australia. There still is, honestly, up until today. It's a very, very influential part of Australia's culture. It does make sense that it was at least slightly modeled, if not modeled like entirely off of English fashion. And this was during a traditional period for the replacement of different uniforms in the British Army, though that's a story for another day. In the late 19th century, many Commonwealth countries, especially when they took part in the Boer Wars, used a khaki hat. Later, each nation adopted their own version of the hat. I'm looking at you, New Zealand and Canada. So who started the adoption of the hat in Australia? Well, it started by Lieutenant Colonel Tom Price. After his service in the British Army in Puma, Punjab, India, he took command of the new Victorian Mountain Rifles, taking inspiration from both the khaki hat and the Puma native police headgear. In 1885, the first destroyed bush hat was adopted by the Victoria Mounted Rifles. So oh, I hate when videos do that. They put like a giant block of text and they go through it too quickly. Ugh, I hate that. After, in 1890, the State Military Command had agreed that all the Australian forces, with the exception of the Artillery Corps, should wear a looped up hat along with a Pungari around the hat. Victoria and Tasmania chose to loop up theirs to the right side, while New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia and Western Australia looped theirs on the left side. Why they loop up the hats? Well, it involved easy for drill movements and later parades. Then in 1903, the slouch hat became the standard and formal headgear to almost all Australian forces due to the Defence Act of 1903. Then we come... Huh, I didn't realise that that would be a law. I mean, I guess it makes sense that military uniforms have to be under some sort of strict code and regulations, but is that is that part of the law? Or is it just expected that if you're going to sign up for the Defense Force that you have to wear the uniform and you probably sign some sort of contract that states that you'll follow that when you're actually signing up for the Defense Force, I assume. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure how it works. I've never signed up for a Defense Force or the military or anything, but interesting. Did not know that come to the Great War, which cemented the slouch hat to becoming iconic to Australia's culture, from the Gallipoli campaign, the involvement of the AIF on the Western Front, and of course, 
propaganda. After the war, and especially after the Second World War, the Australian Sludge Hat had been recognised as part of Australian culture and a national symbol for Australia. There was even a fucking song about it. Now, let's get to some key variants. There have been a lot of changes to the hat over the years, not to mention the small changes some units make to their hats. So for time, I'll just talk about three main versions that are currently in use. The current hat is a felt wool kage hat made by Akabra and a few other companies for the Australian Army, adding a 7 plated pulgari around the hat, 6 for the states and 1 for the territories, turned on the right side with a pinned medal of the Rising Sun badge inscribed in the Australian Army. On the front here is a badge or patch of which part of the Australian Army you are in, and there's quite a few. It's really a basic hat to cover from the sun and to keep your head warm. Well, perhaps a plus 1 in charisma and plus 10 in bartering. Next hat is the Emu Plump hat. This hat is worn by the Israeli Armour Corps. It's like the standard troops hat, but with the added feathers from an emu. The hat style is traced back to the Queensland Mounted Infantry in 1891. Being slouched is kinda up to the soldiers, but I think they chose the practical option. And the next variant, we've gotta talk about the Sikhs Pungari Turban. There are a few Sikhs serving in the Australian army and wear the turban instead of the sludge hat. As you can see the Pungari turban is a dark navy blue or brown khaki turban. See I love that. I love that they can actually respect another culture, another religion and actually incorporate it into their uniforms that way. I think that's wonderful. I know some people, pardon my French, I know some people get their panties in a twist over things like this. I think it's great to see. I think that they're actually incorporating things like this into the uniforms itself and respecting the religions of the service members. Because at the end of the day, they're doing more than the keyboard warriors who are getting all up in the comments and offended by this sort of thing. So the patch on the front, and really that's just it. But I'll say this, it made for a great meme. Today the slouch hat is still used by the Australian Army and as long as this brown slouch hat with its side turned up, it will mean the world to be a symbol of Australia's nation and the soldiers wearing it proudly for the world to see. Did I mention there was a song for the hat? Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Please. I was not aware that there was a song for the hat. If anybody knows what that is, pop over to my Discord and let me know. I might do a reaction video on that. I'm, I'm curious. I didn't realize that there was a song for the slouch hat too. Yeah, I'm just curious because I really don't know too much about what the military uniforms and all look like here. So here's like the full uniform. Is that like a dress uniform, I think? Is that what it's called? A dress uniform when you're not like in camouflage work gear. Uh, again, not really sure how all this works, you guys. If you know, let me know down below. Don't know anything about the military. But overall, it's interesting looking uniform. That's it for this video, you guys. I definitely learned a little bit more about the Australian military, something a little bit less serious than talking about wars and battles, but still something that is very important to Australia history and something that does make Australia stand out from the rest of the world's military is the slouch hat. Also, I pulled this out. I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera. Let's see. So apparently Mark's grandfather, who was in the army, actually made this out of an Australian penny a long time ago. You're probably not going to be able to see the details too, too well on this camera, but it does say penny along the bottom. You've got Australia at the top. So he was definitely crafty. He did quite a bit of projects and whatnot around the house. So you know what? Let's... I did have this like in a little safe trinket box. Let's pop this up here somewhere. Keep that up in the background somewhere. Just a little tribute. I think it's a nice little touch. So that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. It really, really does help support me and help support this channel, you guys. If you have any videos that you want me to react to, pop on over to our Discord server. We have a pretty active chat going on over there. Send over the links of what you want me to react to, and I will see if I can actually react to it or not. That's it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one.